Hello, thanks for joining me for my E2 and E1 mechanism video. If you guys didn't watch part one and part two yet, make sure you go over there and check them out first. All right, so ready to do some elimination? Well, let's get started then. So over here, we have our E2 substrate and our E1 substrate. They're exactly the same. It's a tertiary carbon with uh, your leaving group chlorine over here. And then we have our nucleophiles that are actually very, very bad at being nucleophiles. Why? Because they're chunky and hindered due to these methyl groups over here that are slowing it down and preventing it from uh, getting through to your carbon. So we're not going to be doing a substitution reaction. Another way you could think about it is imagine if I was the nucleophile and I had three of these backpacks on, right? I had one over here, one behind me, and one to my left. If I was trying to go through a narrow doorway, right, I can't get through because these backpacks will be blocking, um, I guess you could think of it as the backpacks will be slowing me down, one, and two, they're going to make me too wide to go through the doorway. And that's exactly why these nucleophiles here don't, do, don't act as nucleophiles, and they actually act as a base. Okay, so yeah, for E2, you want a strong base since E2 means that two molecules are going to have a rate, uh, are going to have an effect in how fast the reaction occurs. So both molecules need to be reactive. But E1, all you need is a mild base because only one molecule is going to have an effect on how fast the reaction occurs. And that's not going to be your base. It's not going to start the reaction. It's going to be your substrate here with your leaving group chlorine. All right, so. Let's get started then. Um, the first thing you want to do for elimination reactions is draw out all your beta hydrogens. In case you guys didn't know what a beta hydrogen is, uh, it's basically the hydrogens that are attached to your beta carbons. So let's find our beta carbons in our substrate first. So if you look over here, right, this carbon here, this one, it's not going to be a beta carbon because it's the first carbon that's attached to your functional group or your leaving group, the halide chlorine. So this is what we're going to be calling an alpha carbon. Okay? So your beta carbon is going to be the next carbon that's one, that's one carbon away from your alpha carbon. So you have one beta carbon over here, one beta carbon over here, right? these two guys, and one more beta carbon up here, because they're all one bond away from your alpha carbon. All right? So the same is true for this molecule over here. So I want you guys to take a second and just draw all your beta hydrogens first, because that's what your strong base or your mild base are going to be reacting with in your reaction here. Because if you think back to Gen Chem, right, what do bases do? Bases grab protons or hydrogens. Okay, take a second, okay? And uh, pause the video. Okay, okay, so this is what you guys should have gotten, okay? Uh, your beta hydrogens sh should, be, should have been here, 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 and here. So you should have a total of six beta hydrogens on both substrate that you draw drawn out. Uh, the most common mistake that people tend to make is they draw out the hydrogens on this carbon re over here because it kind of looks like this carbon's beta, but it's actually not. So don't worry about it. So the next step that you have to do is to draw out, oh sorry, not draw out, circle your anti-beta hydrogens. And the reason for that is because, well, first of all, uh, different professors teach E2 elimination differently. A lot of professors and my professors, they taught, that e, they, they taught me that E2 elimination can only occur at the anti-beta hydrogens. It's, uh, the reasoning behind that I'll show you guys later, but it's just more stable and faster. But I read online recently that some people say that syn elimination can occur, so elimination with the syn beta hydrogens, uh, but that all depends on your professor and how he teaches it, so make sure you guys double check your notes, okay? So anyway, what I mean by anti-beta hydrogens is hydrogens that are uh, on the beta carbon and that are opposite of your leaving group chlorine. So chlorine is dashed over here, right? So that means that it's going into the board, like the model right here. You see how chlorine's going away from you? And then, so anti would be a uh, hydrogen, so an anti-beta hydrogen would be like this hydrogen over here. It's wedge, so that means it's coming out at your face. So that's this hydrogen over here, OK? So these guys are anti. You see how they're facing opposite ways? But a syn hydrogen would be this hydrogen over here, the one that's dashed. Same thing as your chlorine, because it's facing the same side. All right? And can you find the other syn hydrogen? It's right over here. This one's also dashed, so it's facing the same way as your chlorine, basically. So you want to find your beta hydrogens that are anti. So you have this one over here, 
perfect example. And then you actually have one up here. So your methyl group up here, right? Um, let's see. This bond here is free to rotate. So it's kind of going like, woo, 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 woo. So these hydrogens here, one, each of them are going to be anti your uh, chlorine at a certain point in time. So this one's going to be anti right now, and then this one's going to be anti right now, and this one's going to be anti right now. So I'm just going to circle one of them as our anti beta hydrogen, because at a certain point in time, only one can be anti. But it doesn't really matter because it's spinning. The difference for the, hyd the beta hydrogens that are in your ring, like these guys, because they're in a ring structure, their bonds are tight and they're locked together. So these guys can't really rotate. So a, a, so a, a, a syn hydrogen won't become an anti-hydrogen. Okay? But yeah, don't worry about that. Um, here are your beta anti-hydrogens. Perfect. And then for E1, you don't need to worry about your anti-beta hydrogens. And I'll explain to you why in just a couple minutes. All right?